Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with President of Inner City Home, Joe Draco. Uh, we want to sit down today and have a conversation about specifically what the Inner City Home does. And we want to talk about an upcoming event, uh, the Stay Away Soiree. So to start this off, Joe, tell us a little bit about what Inner City Home does in the community so that anyone uh, that's unfamiliar kind of gets a little bit of context behind what, what you guys do and, and how active you are in the community. Right. Thanks very much uh, for having me and uh, also for giving us an opportunity. Uh, as you know, we're going to speak a little later about our fundraising event, but I was thinking uh, last night uh, to prepare for something for the public when we're doing this interview, and I, I gleaned things out of uh, our minutes and, and out of our uh, brochures of what we're doing, and I, I thought I should read some of these out to the public because I'm sure they are not aware of the role that this house plays in our community. And... Uh, you know, it, it, it just flabbergasted. When I became involved here, I was so stunned to know that we even had a home of this nature in the community and the things that they were doing. And so here's some of the things, uh, Connor, that I think the public should know. We have an outreach team that uh, of three, uh, three days a week that they go out and they include the homeless people where they give them hats, gloves, socks, and sanitizers, as, as well as food. In the past month, right here, the staff recovered an individual who was about to overdose, and, and that's not uncommon. We have a lot of these people that at night they come around and sleep outside and are looking for help. We also look after seniors. We have 150 seniors that we're looking after on a monthly basis. The, the one staggering statistic is that new users are climbing unbelievably because of the COVID. We're up right now 26%, and that's mainly because of COVID. Our monthly family food is 828 family households a month, and we had 1,809 unique individuals in the last month drop in for help. We're giving out approximately 7,000 7, pounds of food per week an area that has really concerned us now is volunteers. Presently, we have 170 weekly volunteer hours, but our volunteer base is dropping quickly. A lot of seniors are volunteers here, and they're somewhat concerned about being out and being involved with other people, so our base has really dropped. For a, a family of two adults and two children, we provide them with over 80 pounds of food. Now. This was a staggering comment that Jennifer, our ED, gave me, that she has experienced cars being taken off the road, insurance is being canceled, because they just can't afford to drive the cars and to keep insurance. We have one lady who lives in her car. She comes here every second day for food because she can't keep anything in her car without a refrigerator. The inner city home has been serving this community for 35 years. It's a non-profit organization and receives absolutely no funding. We provide also life management programs. There's no charge. Referrals come from the hospital and from the court system. All, all uh, courses are free. We have a one-time full-time staff member, Jennifer Grooms, and one part-time staff member. So all of our dollars, most of our dollars, I should say, go back into the community. We're a grassroots agency. We're a very small board. We have eight members on the board, all volunteers. They work their buns off to raise $200,000 annually in order to keep this house afloat. So that gives you some idea of what uh, transpires here. Absolutely. For anybody in the community watching this, how do they get involved? So let's say somebody wants to become a board member or maybe do they want to donate food? Do we, we contact Jennifer directly? Do we go on social media? Do we call? Like if somebody's looking to get involved in the community, what's the best plan of action for them to, to get in contact with you? Well, you know, one thing that, that has really uh, blossomed with this fundraising project is the interest of people when you're, like yesterday I approached a, a real estate group in, in town that I've known for years. And one of the partners said, you know, I'd really like to start doing things in the community. Is there any opportunity to, to come on your board? Well, our constitution states right now that we have eight members on the board, but we now have an application form. We're accepting applications. We'll keep them on file. And as uh, vacancies arise, we'll be out scouting and, and adding new people. But there is a need for volunteers on the board. Eight people 
is a workable board, but we need people pounding the beat. We need people with contacts. And you know, I, I'm very pleased to say that not one person that I've approached for this fundraising campaign has turned me down. I don't always get the amount that I would hope for, but you never walk out with nothing. That's and the, the people in Sudbury, the businesses in Sudbury, uh, the support has just been outstanding. We have a goal of $60,000 for this campaign, and I'm very confident that we're going to surpass that goal, and I think we're going to surpass it by more than what I ever expected. That's, that's actually wonderful. Can you walk us through, I know everybody's going through a difficult time right now, how difficult it is to fundraise uh, during these times where businesses are affected, as well as people obviously on the street, you're seeing the numbers rise, you know, 26%. Uh, what, what are some of the difficult parts of, of being able to fundraise and get out there in the community right now? Well, I think the difficulty is that there are so many people looking for funds. Every day you see an, a new one pop up. I, it seems now this 50-50 draw, everybody in the community is starting a 50-50 draw. So the things that happen that I find uh, difficult is I, I've been a fundraiser for many years and <laughs> One of my friends says, every time he sees me, he says, oh, what does he want now? <laughs> but we're a small community. So I hit you, he hits you, she hits you. And, you know, eventually you, the business and, and the individuals have to say, I just can't give anymore or I'm just going to give you something, but it, it might not be what you want. So our, our uh, base is limited. Right. I think one of the big things too is engaging the younger community. So guys like us where we can go in and talk to our contacts and colleagues and get them involved. It doesn't have to be a monetary donation, but just even their time being able to go out so well back in the day, knock doors to get food, things like that. Do you find that there's an increase in the younger generation and involved or, or would you like to see more of that? Well, we definitely would like to see more and I don't think they're involved as much as, as we need. Right. The problem uh, that I find with younger people, they're so involved with their children now and, you know, two or three children are in dance, or in, in sports or something else and mom and dad are homeschooling now. COVID has really impacted us in a way that we never ever expected. No, it's true. Can, can you walk us through us? I think one of the other things I want to talk about before we go into our fundraiser here, uh, talk about what it feels like to be able to give back on a scale like you guys do as an operation. That it's not about, it's not, it's about the organization, the community, bringing them together. Uh, I was asked to come here uh, to serve as a celebrity waiter at one of their dinners. So I came and uh, the next day they asked me to come back and just chat. So I came back and chatted and while I was here chatting, people were coming in and, and that was before COVID and they'd sit in the front room and uh, have a muffin or a coffee or juice and, and they usually had their children with them and gee I, I started to talk to some of these little kids and, and it really hits your heart to, to see how lonely they are and how they need food and they need help and I think of how much we have and etc. But that same day I went outside to get into my car. Here's this young fellow sitting on the steps at the back porch and I said do you want to come in and have something to eat? Oh, he said, I've already eaten. He said, uh, but I'm just re relaxing or resting. I said, would you like a ride home? He said, no, I'm going to walk home. I said, well, if, if you'd like a ride, I can certainly drive you. And he refused the ride, and probably so I shouldn't have even offered to give him a ride. But anyway, he got up from that step, and he proceeded towards the, uh, the garbage bin. And he was picking the garbage up on the, and putting it into the bin. Right. Like, you know, <laughs> I had kids at school that I couldn't get them to pick up the garbage. Right. And here, here's this guy, he's homeless and he's hungry. And he's so grateful that he's been looked after here. He's picking up the garbage and putting it into the garbage bin. And, and you know, it kind of rocked me. I was driving home and thinking, my God, you, you got to help uh, some way. And, right. and that, that really makes you feel good that you're doing something for somebody. It's true and it really puts things in perspective at the end of the day when you see something like that. It, it really kind of makes us realize that we're in this together. That the most part, even though you look at COVID-19 and the, the significant impact, but it could be much worse, right? And that's why we have to stick together and bring people in. So 
I kind of want to transition off of that, Joe. So, so we're talking about the upcoming events. We have the Stay Away So Rate um, that we're you guys are going to be doing your fundraising. You have a goal of sixty five thousand dollars. How did this this come to be? Like, walk us through what this event is and and how people can can join on and be a part of it. Uh, can, can you walk us through that? Yeah, sure. Well, years ago when I was uh, on the Memorial Hospital Board, we ran a, a program for a fundraising event called uh, No Show Cruise. Right. And uh, we did remarkably well with the uh, outcome at the end of uh, the profit was unbelievable. We never expected it. So we were gabbing back and forth here one day and trying to brainstorm for ideas. And I said, why don't we try something like that? It was years ago, and, and most people won't even think about it or remember. So we looked for names. And we, one of the guys on our uh, board is uh, Jeff Martin. He's an assistant crown attorney. And uh, we, he said, what about the uh, stay away soiree? So we thought that was great, so we adopted that, and we decided to go ahead with that as a fundraiser. And, oh, and it's really been, it's been remarkable. You know, I, I tell people, well, now you don't have to go to an event, and, and uh, your wife doesn't have to buy a dress, she doesn't have to get her hair done, you don't have to buy drink tickets, you make a donation, you stay home and, and, and watch it virtually, and uh, everybody <laughs> is uh, ahead of the game. Having a good time, <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. your pajamas, don't yeah. even have to turn your camera <laughs> That's on. right. So could you walk us through, I think it's, uh, so, so for tickets, it's uh, $100 a ticket. Uh, for three tickets, it's $200. And then if you want to get a table, it's for a table of eight, a virtual table for, for 500 correct? Yes, that's correct. And uh, I have to tell you that we lucked out with per, uh, Perry Delise. Perry's a, a local boy and his wife, Sue, a local girl. And uh, I've known Perry for years. And uh, he, I called him and I said, we need some help. Can you help us? Well, he didn't even bat an eye. He said, I'm going to give you $10,000. Wonderful. A couple of days later, he called and said, I'm going to challenge you to something. And I said, what's that? He said, if you can get people to donate $1,000, I will match a $500 additional donation from me up to $12,500. Well, tomorrow, we will reach that $12,500. And with Mike Doyle in their 100th anniversary, they're our lead kickoff sponsor. They gave us ten thousand wow. dollars. So when you get donations of that kind, it really helps when you go out to the public and, and business people who know Perry and who know Mike Doyle's uh, Chrysler. It spins off, and they spin off to other people. So we've been really, really fortunate. When I look at the list of people who are donating, uh, some people that have never donated but realize the need. They're coming through for us, and, and we're now, uh, Connor, we're making a base so that we have a log of emails, phone numbers, addresses, so that in the future we can not always go out for money, but keep them posted on what we're doing and how we're helping the community and how they can get involved and help in the community. No, I think you guys have done an incredible job, and, and I follow and I live by the mentality that the secret to living is giving. And right. in that sense where you see people that have homegrown from Sudbury and, and went out into their careers and they become, you know, successful figures and then guys like Perry and his wife where they, they come back and give and then and Mike Doyle for, from Doyle Chrysler and Dodge where they'll come out and, and it's inspiring to see that people even during these hard times come together. And guys like yourself, Joe, that, you know, being the president of this board where, where every time I see you, you're, you're out in the community trying to engage and say, hey, we're just looking, so when someone falls, we pick them up. And that's nice. kind of a, a really good mentality, I find, find that you bring to the table and everybody as part of your board. Jennifer grooms every time you see her, big smile on her face, uh, yeah. ready, to, ready to talk yes. to people and yeah. say, and it's not about just going and getting money, it's about having that impact and being able to show the community that, look what we can do in a good way and when everybody works together. That's right. That's Very. great. Do you have any final remarks about the event? It's going to be taking place next week on the 17th at yes. the Alibi Room. Do no comment to stay away. <laughs> we, we, because of the lockdown, we're, we're not able to do it at the Alibi Room. So we're going to be doing it right here. And there'll only be uh, Jennifer, myself, and uh, one of the other board members will be present. But I, I'd like to just point out for those who haven't donated that maybe you, you still might be interested. Our uh, campaign goes till the 17th of May. And we're going to have some real beautiful prizes. Everyone who donates will have their names from, from their tickets go into a drum. 
and our prizes are first of all from uh, Mike Doyle. We're we're giving two thousand dollars cash, two one thousand dollar cash uh, grants. We're we're giving uh, drink or uh, um, gas gas cards, restaurant cards. Uh, a nice one is uh, dinner for four, catered by um, Mika Koskala uh, from Cambrian College in their own home and uh, being waited on by members of our board and uh, wine and uh, dessert and, and four courses be included. And then we have a vintage sweater from uh, Connor McDavid nice. uh, autographed and, and that'll be another one of the prizes. So everybody, and you can win more than once, your name will be repeated in the drum. If you win, it'll go right back in. And uh, we're, we're hoping that the community will get behind and, and purchase tickets in order to take part in the prize draw. Absolutely, and that's just part of the fun. It goes to a good cause. We're gonna put a link right here as well uh, where you can donate. If you wanna be able to donate, become a part of the draw, we'll have something set up. I just want to say honestly from the bottom of my heart getting to see the information you provided that you guys have done an incredible job and, it, and it, it's inspiring as you know through these hard times what you guys are able to do coming together it's it, Joe honestly you guys have done a significant job and it's incredible to watch our members of the greater Surrey community be able to give like that and be able to, to help other people well you know Connor you can't do it without support and this community, I've always said, I'm proud to be from Sudbury. I've never been on a campaign that hasn't been successful. And the people here are, are just, they go the extra 10 miles for you all the time. Oh. So I, on behalf of our board, I say thank you to everyone. Uh, you're helping feed needy people and especially children. Uh, you know, it, it breaks your heart that these kids don't have enough to eat. When you think of, you go home and your fridge is full and you, you're really not lacking anything. And, you have to have a, a, a soft spot in your heart when you see them. Oh, for sure. Thank you very much for your time today, Joe. Thank you for having me. Oh, anytime.